Toby and the Stout Gentleman Toby is a tram engine. He is short and sturdy. He has cow catches and side plates and doesn't look like a steam engine at all. He takes trucks from farms and factories to the mainline and the big engines take them to London and elsewhere. His tram line runs along roads and through fields and villages. Toby rings his bell cheerfully to everyone he meets. He has a coach called Henrietta, who has seen better days. She complains because she has few passengers. Toby is attached to Henrietta and always takes her with him. She might be useful one day, he says. It's not fair at all, grumbles Henrietta as the buses roar past full of passengers. She complains that she used to be full and nine trucks would rattle behind her. Now there are only three or four, for the farms and factories send their goods mostly by lorry. Toby is always careful on the road. The cars, buses and lorries often have accidents. Toby hasn't had an accident for years, but the buses are crowded and Henrietta is empty. I can't understand it, says Toby, the tram engine. People come to see Toby, but when they come by bus, they stare at him. Oh, isn't he quaint, they say and laugh. They make him so cross. One day, a car stopped by and a little boy jumped out. Come on, Bridget, he called to his sister, and together they ran across to Toby. Two ladies and a stout gentleman followed. The gentleman looked important, but nice. The children ran back. Come on, Grandfather, do look at this engine. And seizing his hands, they almost dragged him along. That's a tram engine, Stephen, said the stout gentleman. Is it electric? asked Bridget. Oosh! hissed Toby crossly. Shh, shh, said her brother. You've offended him. But trams are electric, aren't they? They are mostly, the stout gentleman answered. But this is a steam tram. May we go in it, Grandfather? Please. The guard had begun to blow his whistle. Stop, said the stout gentleman and raised his hand. The guard, surprised, opened his mouth and the whistle fell out. While he was picking it up, they all scrambled into Henrietta. Hip, hip, hooray, chanted Henrietta, and she rattled happily behind. Toby did not sing. Electric indeed, electric indeed, he snorted. He was very hurt. The stout gentleman and his family got out at the junction, but waited for Toby to take them back to their car. What is your name? asked the stout gentleman. Toby, sir. Thank you, Toby, for a very nice ride. Thank you, sir, said Toby politely. He felt better now. This gentleman, he thought, is a gentleman who knows how to speak to engines. The children came every day for a fortnight. Sometimes they rode with the guard, sometimes in empty trucks, and on the last day of all, the driver invited them into his cab. All were sorry when they had to go away. Stephen Bridget said thank you to Toby, his driver, his fireman and the guard. The stout gentleman gave them all a present. <coughs> Whistled Toby. Come again soon. We will, we will, called the children and they waved till Toby was out of sight. The months passed. Toby had few trucks and fewer passengers. Our last day, Toby, said his driver sadly one morning. The manager says we must close tomorrow. That day, Henrietta had more passengers than she could manage. They rode in the trucks and crowded in the brake van, and the guard hadn't enough tickets to go round. The passengers joked and sang, but Toby and his driver wished they wouldn't. Goodbye, Toby, said the passengers afterwards. We are sorry your line is closing down. So am I, said Toby sadly.
The last passenger left the station and Toby puffed slowly to his shed. <sighs> Nobody wants me, he thought and went unhappily to sleep. Next morning, the shed was flung open and he woke with a start to see his fireman dancing a jig outside. His driver, excited, waved a piece of paper. Wake up, Toby, they shouted, and listen to this. It's a letter from the stout gentleman. Toby listened and... But I mustn't tell you any more, or I should spoil the next story.